okay, maybe Scratch Leslie orchestrated. Micah uh, without a voice. <clears throat> okay, now I'm Micah with a voice. Welcome to our, our Reaction Tuesdays for, um, hey, it's week number two, and I am going backwards on Mondays and forwards on Tuesdays, uh, capturing all the number one Billboard hits of the entirety of the Hot 100 chart history. Today, we are up to the second year in the Billboard history, uh, the early history of the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and we're up to 1947. The number one song of 1947 is a, is a song that um, is called Near You, and it's by Francis Craig and his orchestra. Uh, there's a great little summary that I've, so I have, I've, left it up here to so I can read it to you so I can educate you and myself on this song. This song charted at number one uh, in Billboard in, in December 1947, B-side of Red Rose, vocal by Bob Lamb, so Francis Craig is the orchestra conductor apparently, and Bob Lamb is the vocalist. And it says, although this was a huge hit, Francis only had one other national hit single with his orchestra, beg your pardon a few months following near you this song i've okay so that's where the let's see near you was a surprise hit on a small label with billboard initially predicting that it might be a hit in local markets uh not re realizing the whole country would soon take to the record so that's some of the history behind the song it was a, a song with full orchestra with a vocalist in front Last week's number one of 1946 was Perry Como. We're still very much in this uh, big band, highly formal, very lushly orchestrated pop song era. We're clearly way before the rock and roll era. And uh, this was what the mainstream charts were at the time, for whatever that means. Uh, that would be a whole other series on on how things were measured and some of the biases that were inherent and in how popular music was defined. That's a whole, that would be a whole series of videos more than likely. But this is what Billboard says was the number one song of 1947. Uh, I was about to introduce this video by saying this song was lost <laughs> to the hands of time, but it could be that I'm actually familiar with this song, so I'm gonna wait and hear it first before I proclaim that it's a forgotten song, because it could be a very familiar song. Uh, Let's check it out. Okay, maybe Scratch Leslie orchestrated. I, I guess I went ahead and I heard I saw orchestra in the title and I was thinking of something else but this sounds very uh, do -do 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 -do. it sounds very um, almost ragtimey so I don't know maybe we're going in a different direction than I was anticipating let's let's see where this is going <laughs> That was a very long intro because this is only a three minute song and we had a full minute of intro 
and it looks like as the as the vocals start, the the fullness of the orchestra comes in. But there's definitely an extended uh, piano solo at the beginning. I, I can only assume it's a piano. There are numerous keyboard instruments um, that can be deployed, but I'm going to call it a piano. So that's it's very, uh, an unexpected way of. Uh, of doing the song maybe it was a a way of hybridizing because I know there were a lot of instrumental hits in that era and so uh, maybe this was a hybrid of, a, of an instrumental and a more in a more uh, formal vocal performance or maybe this was a, a standard way of, 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 of presenting songs at the time I don't know I wasn't around back then not that old. It's like heaven to be near you. Times when we're apart, I can't face my heart. Say you'll never stray more than just two lips away. If my Okay, so uh, first third of the song was an extended, uh, uh, lively piano instrumental. The second is a, was an extended vocal um, run. I guess you could call it. It's not a vocal run in the sense that you know, like something Whitney Houston would do, but it was, but it had a very linear sort of progression. Uh, there, I didn't notice a clear like I heard the hook of the song about near you. Uh, but I didn't hear like where there was a formal chorus. It seemed like he was just singing a bunch of lines um, in a linear way for about a minute. And it looks like we're about to get it back into an instrumental section. And we don't have a lot of runway left till, until the end of the song. So that would be very intriguing. Uh, I would like to hear songs released with that, with that uh, presentation today with a one minute of instrumental, one minute of vocals, and another minute of instrumental. That's uh, an intriguing format. I think I've said that twice now, but I, I'm, I'm really thinking about how that could be very effective, where you just say what you have to say, and then you have another a minute, and you have a minute to think about what what the message of the song was, while the instruments kind of take you on a emotional journey through the the way that they want you to feel about the lyrics. So that's it's pretty interesting uh, way uh, way to do things. Uh, we'll let's see how the last minute sounds. It's probably a very common orchestral type flourish, but that's the first thing that came to mind. Oh, was it? Sorry, I like I totally whiffed on 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 where I paused at. I, I don't think this is probably anybody's favorite song, but I know when I start stepping on uh, progressions in a song where there's it's really dramatic and purposeful, and I, I pause it at exactly the wrong point. I know how. How awful that is as a as a fan to have to listen to someone butcher butcher re listening to your song. So let me give this the proper all the way through treatment. <laughs> I 
I would call that quirky and not something I would expect to say to be saying as a reaction to a song from 1947 but it's it's quirky and I wonder if it sounded quirky at the time or if it was normal to do things like that but what I'm hearing in this song is it are some fairly abrupt changes in instrumentation and I am not I do not have a trained musical ear but I also recall thinking when the song started off that it seemed to have started off in a minor key and I'm just going by what I think a minor key sounds like and it was just it caught me off guard because I think of music from this era as being pretty tame and cookie cutter this this felt novel to me now maybe it was uh, perfectly normal at the time uh, but let me know if you're if you're a fan of the music of the music of this era um, then feel free to, to leave a comment educating me about how, you know whether this was a typical way of of arranging a song back then um, yeah, I was a lot more. I'm a lot more intrigued by this record than I thought it would be. Last week, Perry Como, straight down the middle, sounded exactly like what a, what I thought it was going to sound like. This was a little different than I expected. The vocals, uh, again, very nice, very smooth, very polished. This Lamb guy, um, I already forgot his first name. He's no Perry Como, and I don't even have really the ear to, to distinguish between the singers of that era because there was such a stylized way of vocalizing back then that it's very easy for me to just think of them as all one one person that and they don't they don't just really distinguish themselves so much. I, I would have to listen to the music more to get a better idea of what makes Perry Como different from Frank, Frank Sinatra. Uh, and, but what I did hear here was that this guy had a very polished voice, but it didn't feel as urgent and emotive as Perry Como's voice did from from last week. And it could be that this is just a less serious song. And my final note is that this is, we'll see if this trend continues, but what I'm hearing from these first two songs in, in terms of the lyrical content is that it seems as if a lot of songs from this era are about a guy proclaiming his love for a girl and although he's he's saying you know I think he's soliciting a, 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 a certain amount of input from the woman he's fixated on that he wants to be near in this piece but it but it sounds like he's mostly wrapped up in his own feelings about it and Perry Como last week in Prisoner of Love the, the number one song of 46 was very wrapped up in his own feelings so it's it you know it's i i don't mean to necessarily make a lot of social commentary or extrapolate a lot of of, of uh, things about uh gender roles or or a, a, a male centered but i guess i am talking about it now it just seems like this is all about guys fixating on their own feelings toward women so the fact that the number one song of both years has a, a somewhat similar uh, perspective is noteworthy to me. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about this. Uh, it's it's weird for me to react to songs like this because these are not the songs I've ever thought about in a whole lot of detail. For me, music started um, in at around 1955 when my father proclaimed that music started because my father was a big music fan when he was younger and he brought me up thinking that the 1950s were the gold standard and so I don't really so I will so so my my usual trajectory of of the music that I think about as being worthy of of consideration is is rock era hits from like 1955 forward I don't I guess I think of everything before that is pretty cookie cutter and and safe and, and incredibly sanitized. So uh, it's it's good though to dig roll roll up my sleeves and get into some of these older songs um, and and think about them more seriously. At any rate, let me know what you think of the song in the comments or if you have some some points of education for me. Very interesting. 
We'll be back next Tuesday with the number one song of 1948, which is called, I can't read my own writing. Uh, I think it's called the 12th Street Rag. So while this one seemed to have rag, rag elements in it, um, the next one, the, the next one we look at will hopefully, unless they're trying to throw us off track here, will absolutely be a rag because it says so in the title. Uh, join me then, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and help me make music better.